What's up, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, Mo Caso, and I'm here with another episode, season one, episode nine of The Secret Life of the NFT Artist, where every week I come and spill all the juicy uh, secrets behind what I've gone through this week on my journey to becoming a successful NFT artist. So let's get into it. If you don't know, this past week has been my birthday. So I did have a lot, a lot, a lot going on. I don't celebrate too many holidays, but birthdays are one of those things I do celebrate. It's kind of just like New Year's, especially because it's just a few days after New Year's. Um, I really like to hone in reflect on what I've done this past year, get some new goals, get some new things in place that I would like to attack this next year and go at it. So that's exactly what I had to do. And it's it's crazy because again, I've said this kind of before on my podcast where I'm doing a lot of the things I've already known I was supposed to do. And at this point it's like, okay, I know I should have done all this a year ago. I should have done all of it when I first started, but I can't harp on that and I can't let another day go by that I'm not doing it, right? So I'm all in at this point and that's where I am. So for my birthday this year, I did want to get my merch shop going again. When I first got into NFTs with the Global Designer Network, I also had a merch line that I was um, doing on my own with my family where I would sell different I actually used the pattern that I made from my tie-dye and I put it on different items like phone cases and pillows and all these different things. I had the Grand Life Network that I had mentioned to you guys before. So I made a bunch of merch for the Grand Life Network. And also I thought it would be really cool to do merch for different coins, right? So I did like XRP Army and Bitcoin Maxi and these large communities that love their coin and I wanted to get them some merch with my awesome pattern where they can, you know, get some merch and rock my pattern. And I figured that is a great way to advertise my patterns and the work that I'm doing because it's a picture of it still, right? It's not the actual tie-dye. It's not my actual NFT, but it's showing the patterns that I have that are the NFTs and promoting that in the many, many ways that people can use these patterns. Again, that's something that's really, really important. That's even why you guys see these as my um, picture here now for the podcast, right? Or on my banner on Twitter, or like I said, making new merch, even as I'm making new merch, I'm still going to be using these patterns that I have created, that I have minted, that are mine. And I'm able to use in so many different ways because others can too. And that's really the great thing too, about how I've turned these patterns into NFTs, because now when others use those patterns for things, I will get fractional garment ownership royalties on that, right? So say somebody uses my pattern on their digital fashion and then they sell that. Now I'm getting a percent back and that's how now these patterns continue to live and grow and prosper. So me as being the NFT artist, you know, we understand we have to show those examples and be the people to show that this is what's possible. This is what you're supposed to use it for. When you see me posting and sharing my patterns and I'm putting in different poems, I'm putting in different uh, alerts, I'm using it for different backgrounds on stuff, for popes, whatever I'm doing, it's like, you can too, right? And just just creating these this content in the world to show people because the more content I put out there, the more content there will be, especially using my tie-dye patterns and my NFTs. So I'm really excited about that. Also really excited to be getting back into the merch line. And um, one thing that really pushed me to go into that merch line again is even piggybacking off of what I just said on how you have to be just putting a lot of content out there. Right. One thing I've noticed, especially from where I was as an NFT artist when I first started and when I first started, there was Web3 Fashion Week. I was very new to the community. I had tried my hand at the NFT community and Twitter. But again, it's very hard to grow organically, I want to say there, without, you know, joining discords and 
finding people that you really connect with because you don't, you know, it's just social media, it's just Twitter. All you can do is reply to a tweet at the least. So with that being said, moving forward, I just, it was different once I, once I joined the Global Designer Network and it was just, that's when I finally started getting that ecosystem around you as an NFT artist that is so crucial to becoming successful. So when we had Web3 Fashion Week, I was able to sell two pieces. Um, somebody bought one of my bodysuits from auction and then somebody else bought one of my digi socks. So it was really great, you know, that I was able to sell that, but I had a lot of merch that I put on there. I had like 10 different bodysuits that I put out and they're all still available. And it just goes to show, you know, you have to continue to grow that notoriety. You have to continue to grow that appearance in the space so that people are collecting. Sometimes when I wonder like how some artists are able to sell for this amount and some artists are able to sell out, it's because they already have a large community. A lot of my fellow artists are coming from college, right? Where they have a bunch of friends fresh out of college. I went to college almost what, 10 years ago at this point. I went to high school almost, you know, 10 years ago at this point where a lot of us have grown past and are on doing our own things now in life and our own professions and, you know, just kind of respect each other for whatever we're doing, which is why I've always been so focused on attracting and growing with like-minded people because I understand everybody has their own journey. But in this space, you have to be able to attract those that have that similar mission who, you know, visions align with yours so that you guys can attack the mission together. So just understanding you have to be growing that presence in the space. It made me think like, okay, how can I continue to do that, right? I'm putting all this stuff out there where I'm selling in uh, these t-shirts, these galaxy t-shirts as NFTs. And now I'm building out the raw realm where, you know, we're going to do so many different things. And if you guys know, I teach a one-on-one crypto class on the side. And that's something I want to create for all the creators and educators in my space where, you know, we can have something like a study hall and they can all just list the NFT and if somebody wants to meet one-on-one with them, you know, they buy one of their NFTs in order to secure that because something my husband has always put into my heart and is so important to grasp is every um, interaction needs a transaction, especially in the day and age that we're moving to. That's what it is, right? When we're interacting on these platforms, it comes with a gas fee. If we're doing this, it comes with a fee. So once you're able to monetize what you're doing and put that value and that transaction on it, then that's how different... Sorry, y'all. My, my laptop died. So right there where we left off and just keep rolling at this point. So yes, like I was just saying, just finding that value in the every interaction needs a transaction. So aside from that, what I'm doing with the Global Designer Network, it's like, okay, while I'm still trying to become this known 
educator in the space, right? That's why I'm building the raw realm. That's why I'm still continuing to share the information as I do because that's what I bring to the space. And it's amazing because every time I share a little bit with people, they always come back and ask for more and remind me of how great I am at simplifying these things and making them understand it so that they can continue on to the next. So just those reassurances reminded me, you know, to focus on that as well and how I can become this accredited educator in the space. So one of the things I'm really excited about as well is getting my courses recorded. That was something I've had on my to-do list for a while now. I was just trying to figure out the best way for me to put it out there, basically, right? I've seen a few ways where you can sell an NFT and it comes with an unlockable. So I was thinking something of that nature. But at this time, again, because I'm trying to just get this information out and become known in the space for my education and being an educator, I'm looking at different platforms that I can use for that, like Udemy, right? I even know Gumroad is really great at education and people buying their courses there, but I have decided to go with Udemy because it is a very popular site. Looking at their analytics, they have a lot of in-house sales, which is great. And again, going to help me where people go looking for a, what is crypto class, you know, I'm going to be there. So even if they don't buy the class per se, now they're at least seeing my face and seeing what I'm talking about. And those that do buy that that course, I'm sure will be walking away feeling super confident as they enter the space because I like to keep it real, break it down and making sure when you pay me for something, you're going to get that value, right? So, and that's something even one of my friends had to let me know, like, you always bring that value. So don't be afraid to ask for it. And I'm just really excited to, again, think about those different things. I even had another one-on-one today with another NFT artist in the space, and she was selling shades. And it's like, you that's amazing, right? And there's such a place in here where you can go and sell shades. And it's like, Uh, The tip that I gave her is I see so many different artists in here and the way that they're able to really get their name in the game and some skin in the game per se is by being on many platforms, right? You have your most exclusive on DigitalX because it's going to come with staking and all the perks. But there's also like um, Stella who who also has that heart like I have where it's like we want to have something that's cheaper that people can get easily so she's let us know that she's doing a jewelry line that's going to be reasonably priced that you can get from another site called jevels right and from there you can buy in fiat or crypto and now people at least have these ar earrings which helps them just get their pinky toe in the water right maybe not their big toe because they haven't exchanged and gotten cryptocurrency but now they have this nft and if they want more if they want to continue to support Stella, especially knowing a lot of the Web3 girl and getting access to those kind of things are going to take that next step of really committing to supporting. It's like at least by having those other entry points is how you're able to start putting your name out there, putting your work out there and becoming these successful artists that we're trying to be. So that was some um, of the things I really had to think on, especially with that aside from just Putting out courses on Udemy and other platforms, I really also want to put a lot of content out on like YouTube, TikTok, just take over all of social media. And the awesome thing is at this point, I don't even have to do it all by myself. We have this awesome raw round that I've been building. We started it maybe a month ago and we have already over 100 people in our Discord chat of, again, like-minded individuals with this similar mission of wanting to educate, connect, and transform physical to digital items. So even that, where it's like, all I had to do was, and I'm not going to say all I had to do because it was work trying to find digital artists that were able to help transform these physical items for others and connecting them. But I was able to do that. And now we have a whole runway show literally prepared that is amazing and going to be a, the blackout that we were looking for, right? So many different people submitting so many different kind of pieces of art is just 
so amazing to see unfold. So as we all do that, now we're all about to come back with a game plan on how to put all this information out, how to market, how to actually sell our NFTs. So now it's, again, not just me trying to sell my NFT, but also we trying to sell all of our NFTs, trying to tell everybody about what we're doing. And it's just really exciting being able to have that community with that same mission to be able to do that with. So those are some of the things that have definitely made the difference for me this week, especially as I had to reassess what I'm doing, what I'm about to do, and how I'm going to do it. At this point, like I said, many times as I'm getting into what I'm doing next, these are not things that I didn't know I needed to do, especially when it's coming down to like this course that I'm putting on Udemy and how it's based all around like simple and this that, and the third the day literally the day i started learning about crypto for real and like digging in and my husband and i just watching all of this content every day i would have my notebook out trying to take notes and from there i would even try to make simple content like oh i want to make a simple tracker so that we can track what we're putting in what we're putting out although once that started growing it became a little more difficult to track especially because my husband does a lot of that on his own now as i've been focusing on nfts but again even in that sense i already knew the idea was all this information i was learning needed to be simplified which is why at this point i'm still even able to simplify a lot of things because i've already understood that's what i was trying to do but instead of always trying to do this is what i am doing right i've never not been trying to do any of things these things but maybe that's why i have yet to be successful right like even when i was doing my udemy class it was awesome being able to outline it set it up knew exactly what i need to do now i need to write the script and record it right there's no more just trying it's either you're doing or you're not doing and if you're not doing and you know you're supposed to be doing that means now at this point you're wasting time and we know there's no time to waste and i it even makes me you know kind of sad to think that i've wasted time already but again i can't harp on that all i can use that is that fuel that's causing the pressure that's about to make this diamond right some of us work a little better under pressure and that's something i had to realize too like time has never been of the essence to me right if i had somewhere to go i could wake up 15 minutes beforehand and try to rush and, and do it or different things like that where it's like i know if i was to just give myself that ahead of time to really prepare like i know i could then i would get a all the results that I know I'm supposed to be getting. So at this point, it's again, just knowing what we're supposed to be doing and doing it. This next year, there's no more, I'm trying to do anything. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing because I'm ready to be successful. I'm ready to be self-sufficient. Even when it comes down to like, my, for my birthday, my husband did buy me my new guy gaming laptop, which I'm super grateful for. Um, and one of the reasons why I always, always, always will mention this gaming laptop is because it was seriously a goal I had set out when I first got into NFTs. I've mentioned before how I'm like a serial entrepreneur. So my husband is always investing in me, right? He's been bought me a whole desk set and rearranged our whole room and futons and camera sets and boxes of fabric. And even when I was doing lashes, you know, just everything I ever needed in, in classes, just all kind of stuff. Every time I get an idea, every time I get a venture, he's there pushing me and you know letting me know that he does believe in that so this time around i was really like oh well i want to be able to sell these nfts to get it but again he showed that he believes in it you're able to go do it now take this and go do it so again i have it and now i'm just super motivated at this point again to keep going if this was what i said was what was needed in order to get me to that next level there's no wasting time. I'm here. I have everything I need. And it's time to apply the pressure so that we can get to the next level. So just really excited about this next year, everything that I have coming. Every day, we're always learning something new, always connecting, always growing. It's just an amazing feeling to be alive, <laughs> to have the time right now, to have the opportunity right now. But we know tomorrow is not promised, right? 
So just understanding that, valuing time and using that, right? Starting to respect that and using that to my advantage, right? Being prepared and being proactive so that I can start being successful, following through with all of these ideas until they're successful rather than getting distracted or doing anything else until I see that through. So for all my listeners, if you are a serial entrepreneur like myself, I will give you the best advice that I have gotten, which is focus, right? You you can't be a master of all things. You have to be able to master one thing first in order to be able to master everything else. Because if you understand how to master one thing, then you understand the equation to mastering that one thing. Now it doesn't become complicated to master another thing or another thing. It's just like why I like giving the example of Kobe Bryant, right? Because he understood mastery so much where he was able to master the science of basketball and then apply that equation of how he mastered that into anything where, oh, if he's traveling, he can master learning a language. If he's doing this, he can master learning how to build a school around.